Number 52. Before the introduction of chlorofluorocarbons, sulfur dioxide, with its enthalpy of vaporization of 6.00 kilocalories per mole, was used in household refrigerators. What mass of the sulfur dioxide, SO2, must be evaporated to remove as much heat as evaporation of 1.00 kilograms of CCL2F2? And the enthalpy of vaporization is 17.4 kilojoules per mole. And then they give us the vaporization equations. So for the SO2, it's SO2 liquid yields to SO2 gas. So that's vaporization or evaporation. And then the chlorofluorocarbon, the same thing as well, going from a liquid to a gas. Okay, so we're going to set this equation up into two parts. So I'm just going to put a, a line down here. Now, they're asking for the mass of SO2. So that's essentially what we need to find, right? And then they said, we need to find the mass of SO2 that must be evaporated that's the same heat as one kilogram of the CCL2F2. So the thing is, I can't find the mass of SO2 until I find out how much heat was evaporated from the CCL2F2. So the thing I have to find out is I have to find out how many kilojoules or how much heat has evaporated from this one a kilogram of CCL2F2. So on the left-hand side here, I'm going to work with my CCL2F2 because I just have more information on that, right? I need to basically find out how much heat evaporated from one kilogram of this. All right. So they told me that the enthalpy of vaporization was 17.4 kilojoules per mole. Now I'm going to write this down in like an algebraic sentence with an equal sign. So remember, per mole means one mole, right? And basically, for every one mole of uh, CCL2, CCL2, F2, that's being vaporized, right? I'm going to get out 17.4 kilojoules. So that's the algebraic sentence right there. So for every one mole of the CCL2F2, I'm going to produce out 17.4 kilojoules of heat. Well, I don't have one mole. I have one kilogram. So the first thing I have to do is I have to find out how many kilograms or how many moles are in one kilogram. So let's start from there. I got 1.00 kilograms, right? How do I go from kilograms to moles? Oh, well, I can go from kilogram to grams, and then I can get to moles, right? That's my little roadmap here. So how do I go from kilograms to grams? All I got to do is just times by 1,000. That one's easy. So now if I just take the 1.00 kilograms, looks like I got 1,000 grams of CCL2F2. Now... In order to go from grams to moles, that's always the periodic table. That's a ratio, right? So I'm going to just times by a ratio. I'm going to put the grams, and maybe I'll just put this in blue, grams of CCL2F2. I don't want that anymore, so that goes on the bottom. And I want the moles of CCL2F2. Remember, using the periodic table, one mole of CCL2F2 is equal to the mass in grams. So I'm going to go to my periodic table. I'm just going to calculate the molar mass of CCL2F2. So here's my periodic table. I just got it out. I got one carbon. I got two chlorines. And then I got two fluorines. So I got roughly 120.91 grams of the chlorofluorocarbon, say that 15 times fast, uh, gets, goes bye-bye, and now I just do a 1,000 divided by that number, right, to get my moles. So it looks like I have 8.27 moles of my chlorofluorocarbon. So just for um, simplicity of the video, I'm just going to get rid of everything except for how many moles I have now in my, you know, in this problem. So pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to erase this, okay? 
All right. And now I'm just going to say that I don't have one mole. I have 8.27 moles of the CCL2F2. How many kilojoules will that equal? Well, let's see. How can I go from 1 to 8.7? Right, 1 to 8.7, 8.27. All I did was I just times by 8.27. So I could do the same on the other side. I could just take that number and times by 8.27. So 17.4 times 8.27. 17.4 times 8.27, I get 143.898 kilojoules. And that's how much energy is going to be needed, right? So I just found out the first part of this problem. We're still trying to find out the mass of SO2, but... I need to remove, now I know how much heat, I need to remove 143.898 kilojoules. So now I'm ready to move over to the second part and focus solely on the SO2. So here we go, what do we know now? Well now I know that I have 143.898 kilojoules and let's see, what did they tell us? Well, for sulfur dioxide, the enthalpy of vaporization was 6 kilocalories per mole. So I'm just going to write this down, right? So I'm going to say for every 1 mole of SO2, I'm going to get out 6.00 kilocalories of heat, right? Kilocalories are basically capital C calories. These are the calories that are on our nutritional labels on the back of food. It's the same type of calorie. But now here's the problem, guys. In this case, I have kilojoules. In this case, I have kilocalories. They're both units of heat, but they're different units. So I need to convert one into the other. I don't care which one you convert to. Maybe let's just convert the six kilocalories into kilojoules. So here I wrote my uh, conversion factor between kilocalories and kilojoules. For every one kilocalorie, it equals to 4.184 kilojoules. So maybe if I just start with what I'm given, right, I have 6.00 kcals or kilocalories. I'm going to times by my ratio. Kilocalories goes on the bottom. Kilojoules goes up on top. And the units is that for every one kilocalorie, I have 4.184 kilojoules. So I just times the 6 times 4.184. And I get... 23, actually 25.104 kilojoules, right? Six times 4.184. And that's now the new value that goes here. So now for every one mole of SO2, I'm going to produce out 25.104 kilojoules. Okay. So now I am ready. I can use this information and the, the heat that I have to find out how many grams of SO2 I need. Always start with how much you're given in your problem. So for example, for this one, I'm going to start off with 143.898 kilojoules, and I'm going to use my ratio to go from kilojoules to moles. So basically we're going backwards in the opposite direction of how we went the other way. So times by your ratio kilojoule on the bottom, mole up on top. It's telling me that for every one mole of SO2, I have 25.104 kilojoules. So for every one mole, and maybe I would be more specific here, one mole of SO2, I will produce out 25.104 kilojoules. The kilojoules cancel, and now I'm just at moles. So I can go to grams, right? Moles to grams, that's just a ratio, right? Mole of SO2 on the bottom, gram of SO2 up on top. Remember, this is periodic table. One mole is equal to whatever the mass is of SO2. And maybe I'll just pull this up a little bit. So let's see, periodic table time. We got 32.06 plus 2 times 16. 
I get roughly 64.06, 64 .06 moles cancel out, and we now have our answer of how much mass is required. 143.898 divided by 25.104. 143.898 divided by 23, and then times by 64.06. So, whoa, we need a lot more mass. Actually, actually, no, this was one kilogram. So we need a lot less mass. We only need 367 grams of SO2. And you are done. So what's the mass of SO2? That needs to be evaporated to remove as much heat from the CCL2F2. I only need 367 grams. So roughly like, a th you know, this would roughly be like a third of the 1,000 grams or the one kilogram that was required before. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And tell your friends, tell your classmates about us. Look on the channel. We also got like math videos. We got physics videos. So maybe we could help you there too. All right. I hope you're doing well and see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.